I had, had occasional visitors, some of them. I remember when Maurice Bernard from France was one of the scientists who came to visit the lab now and then. And he had been talking to me about uh, the idea of a semiconductor laser a bit. There had been talk about it in the Soviet Union, Bazov and some of the others. And uh, he kind of kidding me along, says, I've invented all kinds of things. Why don't I invent a semiconductor laser? And I kind of poo-pooed the idea because all the LEDs that I'd been familiar with were, oh, a fraction of a percent efficient, very inefficient. And besides, the lasers I've heard about all had nice fancy mirrors and very narrow spectral line widths and there's nothing similar to that in a semiconductor that I could think of, so I didn't really see any possibility of it. But uh, it did prompt me to browse around in the literature a little bit, and I learned about some of the uh, thoughts that the French and the Russians and some others had had on the idea, but they didn't have any specific ideas of how to go about making a laser but at least they introduced me to the concepts. Well, the whole picture changed in the summer of 62, wasn't it? Because I went to a device conference in Massachusetts, my Lincoln lab or MIT, I forget which. And a couple of Bob Redeker's students, uh, Keyes and Quisk, were reporting on very intense infrared from a gallium arsenide diode, and they believed it was almost 100% efficient. In fact, they, their measurements indicated that the light was coming out with something like a kilowatt per square centimeter, very intense radiation, of course, from a very small area, but still very impressive numbers, and this sort of well, it shook me up a bit because it gave me a chance to, if they're really 100% efficient and the radiation is that intense, then I could put numbers in and calculate from the recombination coefficients what the carrier concentrations must have been. And I figured out that we really did have a degenerate population of electrons and holes if that was, if their data were correct. And that implied that a laser might be possible if you could come up with a proper structure. And I toyed around with the idea and decided that if you're going to have uh, some kind of a fabry perot mirror, you'd want to bounce the radiation back and forth in the plane of the junction, not perpendicular to it. And I guess nobody had tumbled to that idea before, so we... I set to work and designed what I thought might be a possible diode structure that would make a laser. And I talked to my boss, Roy Apker, and I already talked to some of my fellow buddies at the lab, and they were very interested, and it seemed like a long shot, but he, Apker gave us the okay to go ahead and try it. So we set to work, and uh, we were lucky we had proper materials on hand. We had degenerate uh, NNP-type gallium arsenide samples around. And I had been an amateur astronomer. And I knew how to polish and uh, okay. do things like that with little crystals. So I was able to set up little, these little tiny specks of semiconductor and polish them with, with uh, parallel faces and made a little interferometer to verify that they were parallel and so forth. And uh, my technician, Ted Salty, started putting these together. And uh, Gunther Fenner set up the test equipment to make a pulser. And by golly, he came in one weekend on a Sunday and he saw something very strange. The image on an on a, uh, infrared image tube showed him a very strange pattern and he got all excited. He called in Apker and we all got to work Monday and saw these strange interference patterns that must indicate some kind of coherent radiation. Because we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know if it would work at all. We didn't know what uh, kind of phenomenon we might see. But uh, it began to make sense once we saw some of these patterns. We got the idea in the end of July and 
I think we had one running in September. Okay. And this guy, Maurice Bernard from France, had come by uh, a week before we submitted our paper, and he was chatting away about the idea of a semiconductor laser. And I was longing to tell him that there was one running in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But we couldn't talk about it then. I had to play dumb. 